In the files for this project, I've placed four pictures from unsplash.com, a collection of free pictures from great photographers. You can see these eight files here. It's, it's eight because some are two X by three X, but it's four in total. Uh, as you can see, these names from a site come with a particular format. It's the photographer's name, in this case, I guess, Alice Krivets, perhaps, or Krivets, anyway, and then a number like 15949 or Kevin Horseman 141705. So a name followed by a number, and uh, you can just go ahead and drag those into your asset catalog. I'll just do it now, select them all, then assets, and then just drag them all in like that. And I'll have the same name here. So you can see Galena N uh, 189483. And that in itself isn't a problem. I think, in fact, it's a good thing to know the, the ID for the picture so you can find it later on in, in Unsplash or whatever. Um, but it does present a problem for screen readers. Uh, so to get started with voiceover, we're going to make a simple view over here that cycles randomly through those four pictures in our asset catalog. So I'll say in our content view is a array called pictures, which contains the following strings. We have, uh, I'll just copy and paste the name, which is easier. We have Alice Krivex 15949. That's, that's one here. Then we have Galena N like that. Then we have uh, Kevin Horstman, like so. And then we have Nicholas Tissot, maybe. I'm not sure if they're French or not, like that. Uh, so it's four pictures being loaded from the, the names. And then we're gonna say in our code, there is some local state to store a selected picture property, which is in.random in the range zero through three. And now in our body, I'm gonna say there's an image of that pictures item, like so. That's resizable and then scaled to fit with an on tap gesture that changes selected picture to be a new in dot random in zero through three, whenever it's pressed. So there's nothing complex there, okay? But I'll press command R, you can give it a try, you can see it hopefully changes regularly. So I tap here on the picture and I'll just change its way through. Uh, you might get the same one twice because uh, obviously it's completely random of four pictures, isn't too many options here. So if it doesn't change once, that's probably why. But you see it working very nicely. Nothing complex here, but it does show off two serious problems. Uh, and now this is where you gotta use a phone. Like obviously I can't use a phone in the device, in the, the simulator, but you can, so please do. If you have not already enabled voiceover, do so now, okay? You can either go to settings on your phone then accessibility and then voiceover and toggle it on or just ask Siri. Just Siri can say, turn voiceover on or turn voiceover off. Uh, if you are doing it with uh, gestures, swiping around the screen rather than Siri, look for the voiceover training directly below the enable toggle because the regular taps and swipes you have uh, grown used to all these years don't work in voiceover. They're different in voiceover. So you gotta try and learn how to navigate around with voiceover. Please do that as well. Otherwise you can get lost and really uh, struggle to follow along. Anyway, on your physical device now, launch your app, give it a try, and try tapping on one of the pictures. See what it says. Now, if you listen to Kevin to voiceover, what you'll hear is it will say something like uh, Kevin Horseman 141705 or Nicholas Tissot 335096. It's not only unhelpful for users because it doesn't describe the picture at all, but it's actually confusing. When they're reading out 189483 or 15949, you're like, What's it, what does it mean? Why is it reading numbers out? It's actually doing more harm than good, which is not great at all. And then after reading the fairly awful file name, voiceover then says image, which is true. We made this thing an image, but it's also acting like a button because we added this on tap gesture modifier. Now the first of these problems here is a side effect of SwiftUI trying to try and give us sensible behavior out of the box. We give it an image file name, it will just use that file name as the voiceover label. Say yes, read out Galena N 189483. It's trying to be helpful. So you can name your assets good names. Give them names like uh, your home screen, whatever checkout button here, whatever you want to. Things that are actually meaningful for users. But that's not always possible. And obviously you want to have translations as well. 
And so we can control what VoiceOver reads out the things using two modifiers. One is called Accessibility Label and one is called Accessibility Hint. They both take text containing anything we want to, but they serve different purposes. The label is read immediately and should be a short piece of text straight to the point for your thing. If this view uh, deletes an item from the user's data, it might say delete, for example. Really short and important. The hint part is read after a short delay. So label first and then the hint. This way I want to provide more details on what the, the view is there for. It might say uh, delete an email from your inbox, for example. Now the label is exactly what we need to solve the first of our problems here because it means we can still leave the image name as it is without having VoiceOver read out the numbers and so forth. And so we're going to add a second array here of simple image descriptions. So we'll say our labels is an array of, it's got to match the order of the previous one here. Uh, so for uh, Alice here, we have some tulips. So I'll say simply tulips. Then we have Galena. This is frozen tree buds, I reckon. So frozen tree buds. Then we have Kevin. Oh yeah, sunflowers is great. Sunflowers. And then uh, here, fireworks, fine. Obviously very, very short descriptions. Now uh, you can go to town here and be as vivid as you want to be. Just keep in mind you're there to illustrate to the user what these things do, bring it to life if you need to. Think about them hearing this label all the time in your app. It can be very annoying how very long, vivid descriptions of your stuff. Uh, Apple use it a lot for um, their wallpapers because they don't change it very often. They change it like once or six months. It describes in detail exactly what you can see, which is very nice. Anyway, to attach that to our image down here, we're simply going to say that is an accessibility label of our labels array selected picture. So let's put that string, tulips, sunflowers, fireworks, directly into the label for VoiceOver here. And this allows VoiceOver to read the correct label no matter what image is present. Of course, if your image wasn't randomly changing, you could just simply type in here the correct thing. You know, I might just say tulips, or whatever you wanted to, uh, it's down to you, but ours is changing all the time so we read from the array. The second problem is that our image is being read as an image, which is self-evidently true. Um, it is an image, but it's not helpful because we've attached this tap gesture to it, so it's effectively acting like a button. Now we can fix a second problem using a different modifier called accessibility add traits. And this lets us provide some extra information behind the scenes to VoiceOver that describes how the view actually works, what it actually does. And in our case, it describes our image as actually a button. You can do that by saying this thing has accessibility add traits dot is button. This thing is actually a button behind the scenes. Now, if you wanted to, you could also remove the image trait. You could say accessibility remove traits dot is image. So even though it still is an image, we're telling VoiceOver don't describe it as such. It's not really adding much to it here. Now with these two small changes, our UI works much better. VoiceOver reads a useful description of the image's contents, and it also makes users aware this is a button you can tap and interact with. That being said, adding and removing traits like this wouldn't have been required at all if we just used a regular button rather than an image with a tap gesture. This is why it's so important to get this right. It's really preferable to use buttons where possible rather than an on-tap gesture, which here would mean a uh, code like this. We'll say something like there's a button with an open brace. The action goes inside the open brace. And then this picture, uh, the picture part here is part of a label. So I'd say that's my uh, picture inside there, like, like so. I can make it resizable and scale to fit. No more tap gesture, not needed anymore. And then simply add the label and remove the extra add traits and remove traits. So the code's actually simpler, I think, and avoids the hassle of trying to describe, oh yes, this really is a button because it can see this thing actually is a button.